Hello readers and listeners, today we're reading Cam Jensen and the Spaghetti Max Mystery, written by David A. Adler, illustrated by Joy Allen. Cam Jensen and the Spaghetti Max Mystery. Chapter 1. Spaghetti Max, Mr. Jensen said as they got out of his car. Spaghetti Max, Cam Jensen, and her best friend Eric Shelton got out of the car too. They were in a parking lot at the airport. They all walked toward the large building just ahead. Spaghetti Max, Mr. Jensen said again. I can't believe it, Spaghetti Max. Why do you keep saying that? Cam Jensen asked her father. I'm so excited to see Max. He was my best friend when I was in grade school. We did everything together, like Eric and I do, Cam said. Yes, like you and Eric. Then just before we started sixth grade, his family moved. I haven't seen him since then. Wow, Eric said, that's a really long time. It's been almost 30 years, but we got back in touch recently on the internet, and now he's coming to town for a few days, and he's staying with us. Dad, Cam said, tell Eric why you call him Spaghetti Max. His real name is Max Miller, but he's really skinny like a strand of spaghetti, so we gave him the nickname Spaghetti Max. He called me Barry J. The J is for Jansen. I know about nicknames, Eric said. Cam is a nickname. Her real name is Jennifer. Cam is short for the camera. She's called that because of her amazing memory. It's like she has a camera in her head with pictures in there of everything she's seen. I want a nickname, nickname too, Eric said. You could call me Spaghetti Eric. Cam looked at her friend. You're not so skinny, she said. Then call me Zitty, Eric. Zitty is a big noodle. Cam, Eric, and, and Cam's father had reached the airport departure and arrivals building. Or call me Pizza, Eric. I like pizza. Or call me Scooter Shelton because I run so fast. Mr. Jensen turned and looked at the hundreds of cars in the parking lot. With all this talk about noodles and scooters, I forgot to look where I parked my car. How will I find it later? Cam closed her eyes. She said, click. Cam always says click when she wants to remember something. She says it's the sound her mental camera makes. I'm looking at a picture I have in my head, Cam said. Your car is parked between a red sports car and a silver SUV. It is, it is, it's in B, it's in section B4. Cam opened her eyes. B4? Eric said, that's easy. It's the word before. Even I can remember that. Cam, Eric, and Cam's father turned and went into the airport building. It was a busy place. People pulling suitcases on wheels were hurrying to the departure gates. People stood looking up at a, jo at a large computer screen. On the screen was a schedule of arriving and departing airplanes. There were there were there was a long line of people standing by the information desk. The building was also a noisy place. There were lots of announcements. Flight 478 from New York now arriving at gate 11. Flight 93 to New Orleans now boarding at gate 16. I made a big welcome spaghetti max sign, Cam told her. I taped it to the front door of our house. It's time to find my friend, Mr. Jensen said. He told me that flying makes him hungry. He said he would wait for us in one of the snack places. There's a snack place, Eric said and pointed. It's called the Pita Palace. There's another one, Cam said. Polly's Ice Cream. Mr. Jensen said there are lots of snack shops here. There are soul sandwiches, fresh squeezed juice, happy burgers, and lots more. We don't have to look in every shop for Max. I'll just call him on his cell phone. He'll tell me where he is. Mr. Jensen took his cell phone from his pocket. Karen, 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 Karen Cram Kramer, someone shouted. Karen Kramer, where are you? 
Cam Arrigan, Mr. Jensen turned, turned. Have you seen her? Asked a man standing nearby. Have you seen my daughter, Karen? She's just five years old and she's lost. Chapter two. I'm Mel Kramer, the man said, and I'm worried. This is my friend, Cam, Eric told Mr. Kramer. She has a great memory. She'll remember if she saw your daughter. Mr. Jensen said, Cam is also great at solving mysteries. Did you see her? The man asked Cam. Did you see Kramer? Did you see Karen? What does she look like? Cam asked. Mel Kramer held his hands at the height of Cam's shoulder. She's about this tall, he said. She... She has strawberry red ribbons in her hair, he smiled, and said she's so cute. Mr. Jensen said, what, what is she wearing? Mr. Kramer thought for a moment, an avocado green shirt and a banana yellow belt. Strawberries, avocados, bananas, Eric whispered. That's a wacky salad, but it's making me hungry. Cam closed her eyes and said, click. She said, click again. Cam has a photographic memory, Eric told Mr. Kramer. It's like she has pictures in her head of everything she's seen. Now she's looking at pictures of people she's seen at the airport. Maybe one of them is Karen. Cam opened her eyes. I'm sorry, she said. I didn't see her. She was right over there, Mel Kramer said. He pointed toward the men's bathroom. I told her I was going in just in for just a minute. I told her to wait for me. Cam, Eric, and Mr. Jensen looked where the man had pointed. There was a large sign on the door that said men. I was going into the bathroom, but she thought it was a restaurant. It says men on the door, Eric said. Why does she think that's a restaurant? She saw men and thought it was men you, Mr. Kramer explained. When Cam was five, she did the same thing. Thing, Mr. Jansen said. She was just learning to read. She saw the first few letters of something and thought she knew the whole word. Once she saw a sign that said Toy Store and she thought it was Toe Store. I remember that, Cam said. I wanted to go and look at all the toes. Mel Kramer turned, looked at the door to the men's room and said, I was only in there for a minute or two and now she's gone. It only takes a minute for someone to get lost, Mr. Jensen told him. There was another announcement. Flight 63 for Los Angeles, now boarding at gate 23. I helped Cam solve mysteries, Eric told Mr. Kramer. We may be able to find your daughter. Eric went to a toy shop near the men's room. Karen could have gone in there. They all walked to the store. There was a small table in front. On it were several battery-powdered animals walking and bumping into each other. Look at that monkey, Eric said. Bam! It just crashed into the giraffe. And bam! The elephant crashed into the lion. Nice crashing toys are fun. Mr. Jensen said, Karen loves stuffed animals. Maybe she saw the crashing animals in the front and went inside to find the stuffed animals. It was a small store with toys, games, and books for children. Lots of parents and their children were looking at the toys. Cam, Eric, Mr. Jensen, and Mr. Kramer walked through the door. Through the store, they found the stuffed animals, but they didn't find Karen Cam Kramer. She knows not to wander off, her father said. We've been in this airport lots of times. This is the first time she's gotten lost. Mr. Jensen said, maybe she went with someone to the gate where your plane is boarding. She knows not to go off with a stranger. I've taught her that. Don't talk to strangers. And if you need help, find the police. But maybe she went to herself to the gate. Mr. Kramer's hand shook as he took two long slips of paper from his pocket. These are boarding passes, he said softly. Karen knows we're supposed to leave from gate 18. He looked at the signs against the wall. Gate 18 is that way, he said, and pointed to the right. He started toward this gate, then he stopped. To get to the gate, you need to pass through the security check. And to pass through the security, you need a boarding pass. She doesn't have one. I have it. Eric leaned close to Cam and whispered, he's about to cry. I'm worried, Mr. Kramer said. This is the first time she's gone lost. Don't worry, Eric told Mr. Kramer. We'll find your daughter. Chapter 3. Maybe we shouldn't look for your daughter. Cam's father said, what? Mr. Kramer said, raising his voice. I can't just leave her here. I said that wrong. What I meant is that we should let her know where you are. We should go to the information desk and ask them to make an announcement. 
I know where the information desk is, Cam said. We passed it on our way in. They all followed Cam through the busy airport building. While we walked, Mr. Kramer said, keep looking for Karen. Remember, she's wearing an avocado green shirt. I remember, Eric whispered, avocados, bananas, and strawberries. There's another announcement. Flight 119 for Houston, now boarding at gate 11. There was a long line of people waiting by the information desk. Mr. Kramer got on the end of the line. He was moving slowly. You stay here, Mr. Jensen told him. I'll go to one of the ticket windows. Maybe they can make the announcement, Eric said. We'll look for her. We're kids, just like Karen. Maybe we can figure out where she is. Can Eric and Mr. Jensen walked away from the line. You have to promise me you'll stay together, Mr. Jensen told Cam and Eric. I don't want you to get lost too. We promise, Cam and Eric said. Mr. Jensen walked toward the ticket windows. There are lines there too. What's your idea, Cam asked Eric. Where do you think Karen is? Eric turned a little and looked. He turned a little more and looked some more. When he had turned all the way around, he told Cam, I have no idea where she is. I just thought we're better at finding people and solving mysteries when it's just the two of us. Let's go to the last place her dad saw her, Cam said. Let's go to the men's room. Cam and Eric stood just outside the men's room. Men hurried into it. Some were pulling suitcases on wheels and men hurried out. Yuck, Cam whispered. Each time the door opens, I smell bathroom. Bathroom? You know that amming and cleaner smell? The door opened again. A man holding onto a small boy's hand came out. Next time, the man told the boy, don't wait until the last minute to tell me you have to go. Did you smell it? Cam asked. Yeah, Eric said, and pinched his nose closed. Do you know how that makes me feel? Cam asked. Eric shook his head. He didn't know. It makes me feel like I have to go to the bathroom. Cam looked around. To the left of the men's room was a toy shop. To the right of the men's room was the women's room. Maybe that's it, Cam said. Maybe Karen stood here waiting for her father. Then suddenly she felt she had to go. What? What? So what did she do? Eric shook his head again. Cam laughed. When you have to go, you have to go, Cam said. So she went to the bathroom. You have to go too, Eric said. You have to go in there and look for her. Cam went into the woman's room. Eric stood by the door to the men's room and waited. Men went in and came out of the men's room. Then Eric decided he had to go. Just after Eric went into the men's room, Cam came out of the woman's room. Cam hadn't found Eric, hadn't found Karen, and now she couldn't find Eric. She stood outside the men's room and waited. When Eric came out, she told him, Karen's not in there. Eric wiped his wet hands on the back of his shirt. There's no way, that's no way to dry your hands, Cam said. There are paper towels in there and an electric hand dryer. I know, but I thought you might come out and not see me here and worry. Hey, Cam said, maybe that's what happened with Karen. Her father came out and she wasn't with here. She wasn't there, Eric said and pointed to the women's room. Her father thought she was locked. He went to look for her. Then when she did come out, Eric said, her father was gone. We may know what happened to Karen, Cam said. We may know what, why she wasn't waiting for her father. But there's still one problem. We didn't find Karen Kane, Kramer. Kramer. Chapter 4. Cam and Eric went back to the information desk. There's still lots of people waiting there. Mr. Kramer moved up. He was now in the middle of the line. There you are, Mr. Kramer said to Cam and Eric. Where's Karen? We can find her. I'm really worried. I need them to make that announcement. I'm worried too. I need to make my flight, the old woman just ahead in the line said. I'm going to Seattle, but they have so many gates, I don't know where to go. The gate number's on your boarding pass, Mr. Kramer told her. It's gate 18. Thank you, the woman said and hurried off. My mother lives in Seattle, Mr. Kramer said. That's where Karen and I are going. There was another announcement. Flight 288 from Denver now arriving at gate 16. We think we know what happened to her, Eric said. We think we know why she didn't wait for you. Eric told Mr. Kramer that when he came out of the men's room, Karen must have been in the women's room. Then it was my fault. I should have just waited there. People at the front of the line had their questions answered and walked off. Mr. Kramer was slowly moving closer to the information desk. Mr. Kramer shook his head and said, Before I don't 
I, before I didn't know why she wasn't waiting for me. Now I know what might have happened, but it doesn't help. I still have, I still don't have Karen. There is another announcement. Karen Kramer, please go to the information desk. Your father is waiting for you. Did you hear that, Cam said? Hear what? Eric and Mr. Kramer asked. They just called for Karen to come here. My dad must have had them make the announcement. I didn't hear it, Mr. Kramer said. This place is so noisy and there are so many announcements. Eric said maybe Karen heard it. If she did, she'd po she's probably on her way here. I hope so, Mr. Kramer said. Mr. Jensen joined Cam, Eric, and Mr. Kramer. Let's go, he said. I'm sure Karen heard the announcement. She should be here soon, but I'm next. Mr. Kramer said, yes, you are, Mr. Denson told him, but you're waiting to ask them to make the announcement and they already made it. Now your daughter may be coming here looking for you. We don't want to miss her. They all went to a small waiting room near the information desk. They stood there and looked for Karen. Mr. Kramer looked at his watch again. It's getting late, he said. You've been very helpful, but you don't want, but you don't have to wait with me. You must have a plane ca to catch. Oh no, Mr. Jensen said. We're not going anywhere. We came to pick up my friend Max. Mr. Jensen took out his cell phone. I forgot all about Max. He must be wondering where we are. I have to call him. Mr. Jensen pushed the buttons on his phone. He waited. Max isn't answering. He pushed the buttons again. He's still not answering. What happened to Spaghetti Max? Chapter 5. Cam, Eric, Mr. Jensen, and Mr. Kramer watched as many people as many people walk by the information desk, Mr. Jansen said, now we're looking for two people, Karen and Spaghetti Max. Hey, there's a girl about five, Eric said and pointed. Cam said, she's not wearing an avocado shirt, Mr. Jansen said, and she's not holding her mother, and she's holding her mother's hand. She's not Karen, Mr. Kramer told Eric. Yeah, Eric said, I guess I knew that, but I'm just so anxious to solve this mystery. Camp Eric, Mr. Jensen, and Mr. Kramer stood there a while longer. We don't all need to be here, Cam told her father and Mr. Kramer. We're all watching the same people walk by. While you stay here, Eric and I can go looking for Karen. Eric said, we'll also look for a man who's really skinny. Stay together, Cam's father said. As they walked off, Cam told her, I don't like to just stand around. I like to do things. Cam and Eric walked toward the men's room. They walked past many of the shops in the building. Then they reached the security checkpoint. Beyond it were the gates. They couldn't go any farther without a boarding pass. Where could she be, Kima? She knows she's lost. Why isn't she looking for her father? And where is Spaghetti Max? Eric asked. They looked at the people waiting by the checkpoint. Those near the front of the line emptied their pockets into a plastic bin. They put their jackets, hats, and shoes in another bin. Then they put the bins on a wide moving belt and took and that took them through an x-ray machine. They put their carry-on luggage on the belt too. Next, the people walked through a large arch. arch. Cam watched a woman with a small child give the security guard a boarding pass. Then they, walked, then they both walked through the arch. Did you see that? Cam asked. She just gave the guard one pass. Maybe small children don't need one. Eric said, I think she gave him two passes. Let's find out. Cam and Eric went to the front of the line. Please wait your turn, the guard said. We're not going in there, Cam said, and pointed to the gates beyond the arch. We just have a question. Does a small child need a boarding pass? Everyone needs a pass. Eric asked him, did you see a small girl with red ribbons in her head and a green shirt? I've seen lots of people and I don't remember them all. Cam and Eric looked beyond the checkpoint. They looked at the people on their way to the gates. They didn't see Karen. Cam and Eric walked away from the checkpoint. Karen doesn't have a boarding pass, Cam said. She couldn't have gone to the gate, so where is she? Let's go back, Eric said. Maybe she heard the announcement and went to the information desk. Maybe now your dad is looking for us. He started back, so that back. then as they walked past a newspaper stand, Eric stopped. Look, he said, I see him. Who do you see? Spaghetti Max. Chapter 6. That man is really skinny, Eric said. He looks old like your father. He must be Spaghetti Max. Let's go tell him. Tell him that your dad's waiting for him by the information desk. There's another announcement. This time it was very loud. 
Flight 51 to Phoenix now boarding at gate 12. Cam looked up. The announcement was coming from a metal speaker right above her. And Eric, the speaker was hanging from the ceiling. Flight 92 from, da from Dallas now arriving at gate 32. Cam turned and looked at a large computer screen with a schedule of airplanes arriving and leaving the airport. The information about the Phoenix and Dallas flights were on the screen. Did you just hear those announcements? Cam asked Eric. What announcements? It's so noisy here. That's the problem. Karen Kramer might not even have heard that her father is waiting for her at the information desk. What about Spaghetti Max? At least we found him. He's right over there. Why don't we tell him that your dad's waiting? We think we found him, Cam said. The man was looking at the many newspapers in the rack. Cam and Eric walked toward the thin man. Eric said, hello, Spaghetti Max. The command kept looking at the newspapers. Cam said, hello, Mr. Miller. The man took a newspaper off the rack. He took it to the counter and paid for it. Cam and Eric followed him. Excuse me, are you Mr. Max Miller? Eric said loudly. The man turned. Are you talking to me? Yes. Are you Max Miller? No, I'm not. Are you sure? Eric asked. The man laughed and shook his head. Are you asking me if I'm sure I know who I am? I'm sorry, Eric said. That was a silly question. It's just that we're looking for Max Miller and we never met him. Well, good luck with that, the man said and walked away. Cam said, we should keep looking for Spaghetti Max. He has a cell phone and he has our address. If we don't find him, he'll call Dad or he'll take a taxi to my house. We should be looking for Karen Kramer. I am, Eric said, I'm looking for both of them. I'm looking for a tall, skinny man and a five-year-old girl wearing an avocado green shirt. Eric looked at everyone they passed as they walked toward the information desk. Cam stopped looking at them. Instead, she closed her eyes and said, click. She said, click again and kept walking. Hey, Eric said. He pulled Cam toward him. Watch where you're going. You almost walked into someone. I'm trying to remember everything I've seen. I've seen since we came to the airport. I must have seen something that'll help us find Karen Kramer. Kramer. Eric took Cam's hand. I don't want you to get hurt, Eric said. When we came here, Cam said, we saw lots of people pulling suitcases. We saw people standing in front of the computer screen looking at the airplane schedule. We saw all those eating places. And there was a long line of people standing by the information desk, Eric said. And there's still a long line. Click. Cam said again. Now I'm looking at all those toys and souvenir shops. Open your eyes, Eric said. There's someone with your dad and Mr. Kramer. Is it Karen? No, it's a man. Chapter 7. Mel Kramer hurried to Cam and Eric. Did you find Karen? No, Eric told him. We looked everywhere. We even went to the security check by the gates. It's my fault. Mr. Kramer said, I should never have left her alone. He shook his head and slowly walked away. Mr. Jensen waved to Cam and Eric. Then he walked to them. A tall, heavy man was with him. This is my daughter, Jennifer, Mr. Jensen told the man, and this is her good friend, Eric. Hello, the man said. Barry J has told me a lot about both of you. I'm Spaghetti Max. You are, Cam asked. Yes, Max Miller said, and you're the girl with the amazing memory. Don't you have a nickname? Yes, they call me Cam. It's short for the, uh, for the camera. People call me that because I have a photographic memory. People used to call me Spaghetti Max because I was thin as a strand of spaghetti. And do you know what? Cam and Eric shook their heads. They didn't know what. I also like to eat spaghetti and pizza and ice cream and lots of other things. So now I'm not so thin. Flying makes Max hungry, Mr. Jensen said. Most things make me hungry, Max said. As soon as I got out of the plane, I had a sandwich at Sol Sandwiches. Then I had a strawberry ice cream cone at Polly's Ice Cream Shop. Why didn't you answer my dad when he called you, Cam asked. When I got on the airplane, I turned off my cell phone. That's why I didn't hear his call. I finished eating, turned on my cell phone, and called your dad. He told me where he was waiting, Mr. Jensen said. I found him sitting at Polly's. As soon as I saw him, I knew he was my skinny friend. Skinny friend Spaghetti Max. Mr. Jensen's friend laughed. It's been a long time since I've been skinny. Now, Mr. Jen now Mr. Jensen laughed. Sometimes you see what you want to see, he said. 
Sometimes you see what you want to see, Cam repeated slowly. Then she closed her eyes and said, click. She said, click again. That's it, Cam opened her eyes. I just thought of something, she told her father. Can you and Mr. Miller wait here? Eric and I'll be right back. Cam hurried off. Eric ran to catch up with her. What did you think of, Eric asked. Do you know where to find Carrie? Cam and Eric walked quickly past the information desk. They walked toward the snack shops. Do you remember what Mr. Kramer told us about Karen? She saw the word men and thought it was men you. Eric said, kids learning to read do that all the time. Even I did that. Yes, you see what you want to see. You see a few letters and think you see a word you know. Cam and Eric were in the front of Soul Sandwich Shop. What, what would you do if you, what would you want to see if you were Karen Kramer and you were lost at the airport? I'd want to see my father. What else, Cam asked. What else would you want to see? Eric shook his head. He didn't know. If you couldn't find your father, you would look for the police. Remember, he said Karen knows not to talk to strangers and to ask the police for help. Cam and Eric were walking toward Polly's ice cream shop. Look at that sign. Do you see the P-O-L and the I-C-E? That spells police. Someone who thinks men spells men you might think Polly's ice cream spells police. And there's another announcement. Flight 90, 9, 9, 90 for Seattle, now boarding at gate 18. Kim said, that's the Kramer's flight. We have to hurry and catch and check the ice cream shop. We've got to find Karen. Chapter 8. Polly's ice cream was crowded. There was a long counter in front. Beneath the counter, under glass, were tubs of ice cream. Above the counter was a large sign listing all the flavors still at Polly's. Hey, look, Eric said. We can get a bubblegum ice cream cone or blueberry raspberry swirl. We're not here for ice cream, Cam said. We're here for Karen. There was a long line of people waiting to buy ice cream. Cam and Eric looked for a five-year-old girl wearing an avocado green shirt. Karen wasn't in line. Behind the line were several small round tables. Excuse me, Cam and Eric said as they tried to get on the other side of the line. Hey, a man shouted at them. No pushing the head. Get to the back of the line. We're not here for the ice cream, Cam told the man. We're looking for someone. Cam and Eric got to the other side of the line. They saw people standing and sitting by the tables. At a corner of the at the corner table, they saw a small girl. She had red ribbons in her head and was wearing an avocado green shirt. Cam said, "Maybe that's her, but she looks but she's sitting with people." Eric said, "It looks like that girl's with her family." Karen, Karen Kramer, Cam called as she walked toward the table. The girl looked up. When Cam reached the table, she asked, "Are you Karen Kramer?" The girl nodded. Come with us, Eric Kim said. We'll take you to your father. The girl shook her head. She wouldn't go. Do you know this girl? A woman sitting to the table asked. She seems to be lost. We try to help us, but she won't talk. To we try to help her, but she won't talk to us. The girl's head was down. She wasn't looking at anyone. Karen, Cam said, come with us. We'll take you to your father. I can't talk to strangers, she whispered. I'm waiting for my daddy or the police. That's what she told us, the woman at the table said. Come with us, Eric said, or you'll miss your flight. Karen Kramer shook her head. She wouldn't go. You stay here, Cam told her. I'll get her father. Cam hurried to the information desk. I found her, she told Mr. Kramer. Where is she? She's at Polly's Ice Cream. Mr. Kramer, Mr. Jensen, and Spaghetti Max followed Cam to Polly's. Mr. Kramer hurried to his daughter. They hugged. I was so worried, he said. What are you doing here? I was lost, Karen said as she got up from the table. You told me not to go to the police when you told me to go to the police when I'm lost, so I came here, but the police didn't come. I think they're busy. Mr. Kramer took his daughter's hand. She looked at his watch. Let's go, he said. We have to catch your plane. He told Cam and Eric, I should give you to a reward. No, you shouldn't, Cam said. You should hurry to gate eighteen. Mr. Kramer smiled. I can't thank you enough for finding Karen, he told them. Cam, Eric, Mr. Jensen, and Spaghetti Max watched Mr. Kramer and Karen hurry toward the security check, check by the boarding gates. We should go home now, Mr. Jensen said. Oh, no, Spaghetti Max told his friend. That man was right. These children deserve a reward. Let's have some ice cream. I know what I want. I know what flavor I want, Eric said. I want blueberry raspberry swirl. 
Cam said, I want a bubble gum, bubble gum cone. Spaghetti Max said, I'll have a strawberry cone with strawberry cone with chocolate sprinkles. Mr. Jensen looked at a large sign which listed the many flavors of ice cream sold at Polly's. He thought for a few moments and he said, I'll take a dish of vanilla ice cream. Vanilla? Can't Max said loudly. All those choices and you want vanilla? I like vanilla. It's been almost 30 years since I saw you and you haven't changed, Max said. You always like things plain and simple. You're right, Mr. Jensen said. I haven't changed. I still like vanilla ice cream and I still have the same good friend. Are you BFFs, Eric said. Eric asked, best friend forever? Maybe, Mr. Jensen and Mr. Miller said. Cam looked at Eric. Eric looked at Cam. That's what we are, Eric said. We're BFFs. Best friends forever. The end.